let's 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 move on to the game because I'm taking a while. Got it, got it. No, no, that's fine. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, even though I said that I was going all out, I still uh, ended up playing something solid, something that I was I was kind of positive that my opponent will try uh, to not if not beat me, then at least get some kind of uh, advantage in the opening. So I I decided to go for for Petrov. Actually, I Mm -hmm. it's weird because. I think my record in Petro with Black is great. So I I think out of like four or five games that I play, I, where I played Petro against very strong opponents, I think I scored either three and a half or four. Unfortunately, my, my oh. winning streak was ended by uh, by Grandmaster Lequan Liam and my former teammate. We played a classical game in, during World Open in 2019, and uh, he beat me there with White. So that was that was the only games they lost in playing Petro. But still, you know, even even then, I still had a pretty nice record. So I decided to opt to opt for for Petro once yeah. again. And, and here I'm going to quickly here. Uh, the main move here for White would be to play d4. But then mm-hmm. you know there's like there's a lot of theory if you if you go go onto these lines or the lines like like this. I'm not sure how familiar you are right. with Petro. I, I I'm I'm uh, quite familiar. Um, okay, good. One of my you students. Know that there's, there's things like yeah. this, for example, and and, and then you have some positions like this one, for example. This yeah. is a position that, that they had in my game against uh, Liam uh, Le Kwang, I believe. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's there's a lot of theory here. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but um, Black should be doing okay. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess my opponent decided that going for a, a more sharp option, which Nancy three brings, is a better option. I so call this, this the club line. I call I call this a club line. I actually play knight c three myself here. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, it's actually it's actually it can be pretty tricky for black to deal with. So let's see, mm-hmm. let's see, uh, let's see how it went. I I I can tell you I was not very uh, I wasn't a big fan of how the opening phase went for me. So here I I just I know there's a lot like a lot of different setups that you can do, but I just I just do like the simplest one, which is just to play bishop e seven, castle short quickly, and then develop develop the queen side. That's what I did. I think we should probably uh, we should probably do this. I just realized that why if I'm showing my own game, why am I showing it from from White's perspective? <laughs> I should. Oh, I I mean yeah, I I have it from your perspective, so don't worry oh, about that. Oh, you do. That. I, I yeah, I just didn't realize that I I forgot to flip. Oh wait, how do I? It's not. It's my second time using the analysis uh, analysis board feature, so I'm not even sure how to flip. Uh, one sec. How do you even flip the board? Gosh, I'm so I'm so inexperienced with this. I can reset the board. Wait. I'm sorry, but how do how do I flip the board real quick? Okay, you go to the settings cog and then you hover oh, okay. over it and then it'll give you an option to flip the board. Wait, you go to settings what? The, settings. You see the little cog on the on the top right yeah. of the board? And then you just hover over it and it'll give you like a little drop down doesn't mm. just yeah like if you go to the top right and it'll just give you like focus mode or flip the board or you don't have that oh, option oh oh i see i see what you're saying ne- near the board okay yeah no, no it's okay. fine okay. directions are hard okay <laughs> yes yes all right thank you okay come on like i haven't had i, have, I, I forget things i guess I it's fine it's fine any blitz or anything like knows now. about 50 hours worth of theory forgets <laughs> okay anyway let's move on okay so here <laughs> bishop e3 um i played an d7 here which is i believe fine because uh obviously i can i can start off by castling first which will probably be essentially the same as going to transpose if my opponent plays queen d2. And here, the the point is that my knight wants to... Can, can you see the arrows, by the way? I can see the arrows, yep. Okay, perfect. So my knight, my, as far as I know, the ideal position for black's knight here is on f6, from where from where it can go places. You know? right. and, and also support support this 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 d5 c6, fighting right. for center. That's what I did. I played knight d7 here. Um, I'm going to play queen d2. And here, I, I played a move that I don't like. So I played c6. Um, it's not a mistake, but why do you think I didn't like this move that much? And by the way, guys, I'm a slow thinker. So 
just because I don't answer quickly is just because I'm taking in the position, okay? I've warned you. I've warned you that people might not like watching this because you're going to be like, ah, uh, and then 30 hours later, you know, you'll finally... No, I mean... <laughs> uh, but I think this is going to help kind of, like, see what how I think about things. But I don't know. I I kind of like the move C4. You want, you and, want to play C4 as white? Yeah. So, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to, to, to fix fix my pawn on D6 and not let it move up to D5, right? Right, that's, but not... That's... Where does my bishop go? Where does my light squared bishop go, right? After okay, that... Yeah. So... Where do you think your light squared... Where do, first of all, let me, let me ask you this. Where do you think your light squared bishop goes usually? If Even if you don't play C4, do you think that there, it's a good... I think it goes on G2. On you think it goes I... on G2? So you think... Or E2. Or E2, Okay. Okay, any any other good scores you see for the bishop? C4, but I don't like C4 because of the D5 break. Like, it just invites a D5 break. And then, right. okay, yeah, we play bishop B3, C4, and then we can kind of break with C4. But... Right. Um, I think, it would be, would be I think usually in these cool. positions, it goes on D3. Yes, yes. And why do you think so? Why do you think it usually goes... Wait, let me... Let me. Sure. Um, and the reason is because now it hits both ways, right? It hits the king side, it hits the queen side. And also, yep. um, I think this is the most ideal thing. You're not committing to one plan and you're kind of keeping your options flexible. Right. Yeah. Oh, actually, I could, I could make it green. Right. Yep. <laughs> Wait, how do I make it? How do I make it red? Oh, there. Yeah. Alt, Perfect. shift, or yeah. <laughs> Control. Yeah. You can make Perfect. it blue as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think since. White is choosing a rather sharp setup, right? They be casting long, and they're kind of expecting black to castle short, which, which, did happen in my game. Uh, sometimes, actually, some in some in certain variations, black also castles long, mm -hmm. as far as I know. But for that, for that, black knight would have to go to c6. So, like, if you go back here, I think knight c6, bishop e6, queen d7 is is the way if black wants to castle long. But you know, there there are different problems there. Mm -hmm. And here, yes, as you said, as you said, the white bishop. Since I play c6, I'm, the reason why I don't like c6 so much is because I'm committing myself a little bit too much here, and I'm basically saying, oh, this is what I want to do, right? Right. But if I, since I know that I'm going to castle short here, right? I'm going to castle anyway. Then it makes, in my opinion, it makes more sense to castle first, and now. If I ever want to play c6, I still can, right? So it, right. For example, here nobody takes away the c6 possibility for me, and if I decide decide to still play c6, I uh, always have a chance to do so. However, in this particular case, I may decide to opt out for different uh, for different setups. For example, this is also a very popular setup to go for c5 and quickly. As far as I understand, the point of c5 is that you're kind of freeing your queen up so it can go to a5. You can maybe even sometimes start attacking the white king with some b5, b4. In mm -hmm. some cases, you're taking away the d4 square from white's pieces, right? Because the knight could potentially go here to from, from d4 to f5, or the bishop could place himself on d4 and, and be kind of annoying there. So this is one setup I could do. And also, I could just I could just postpone c6, d5 plan for like another couple of moves if I want to. Because once again, the thing is that if I know that, for example, I need to make a move like rook e8, right? Because I, I I need to develop my pieces, and rook e8 does just just that. It develops the rook on a almost an open file, right? I will just I will probably need to like move my bishop away to to make right. my rook kind of useless. I mean, not useless but useful. Sorry. So um, I don't like playing c6 prematurely because I know that I can always do that, and instead of doing it right away, I want to kind of hide my intention of right. my opponent. If you actually, if you, check, I mean, you probably know some lines here, but if you, if you, if you check the opening book in this position, uh, very few people actually play c6. Uh, yeah, so the most popular is to play castle or to play knight of six here. But mm -hmm. I, I believe. Okay, but anyway, I'm, I'm pretty known for, for not knowing too much theory and mixing lines and stuff like that. So I played c6, and now I'm kind of, I need to, like, I need to, I need to live with it now. So my opponent obviously castled, uh, castled wrong. Uh, now, once again, I don't think at this point the, the move order matters. I played the uh, net of six first because I can, mm. you know, I can always castle. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Uh, so bishop d3 happened, and right. short castle. So here, uh, white 
well, okay. So first of all, let me ask you this: How uh, how would you proceed if you're white here? So what would you what would you look for uh, if you're if you're playing with white pieces? What is what what do you think about it? I mean, you probably know this position somewhat, and you probably know some plans, but still, I'm not not about. this exact position because it's yeah. So in the Petrov, the ex a lot of the experience that I have is from coaching, and my okay. student is around eighteen hundred feet a, so that's a lot of the experience that I have just going over her games but I've never reached this position um, but this looks like a position where it's gonna sound crazy but where everything is kind of normal I kind of just want to play h4 now okay so you think h4 would be a good idea to simply just launch the immediate attack uh, against the king yeah and also okay. see what they're gonna do with their pawns and the pieces around their king okay and now the Fair bishop enough. on so, uh... e7 sorry go ahead no, you go, you go ahead. Yeah, so the pieces around the king uh, and in the center and also the bishop on e7 look a little bit weird. The bishop on e7, you know, you're probably going to play d5 and bishop d6 or a bishop somewhere, right? Um, and what is black's plan here? And so I uh, only see one. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yep, I only see one plan, right? To play d5 and maybe attack on the queen side, right? There is no okay. valuable center break. Maybe you want to play b5, maybe even b6, c5, bishop b7. But I, this plan takes a long time. You know, if you want to play, yeah. So that's exactly um, the point. And I think it might be a bit too slow because the c3 pawn, although doubled, acts as a beautiful protector. Yeah, I actually agree with you completely. So uh, I do not agree with you, however... Or about the intention of the c6 d5. I think the intention of c6 d5 is actually pretty, pretty straightforward. I just simply want to play an a4. And if, if you allow me to play an a4, the very next move, you're not going to like it, actually. My knight in e4 is going to be is going to be extremely powerful. And if you mm -hmm. ever want to, let, let's say, if you make a neutral move like rook e1, let's, let's see, or, or h, even, maybe even h5 here. Right. If h5, you, get to, you allow me to play an a4. Now you need to make a choice. If you take here, it's gonna it's gonna evoke uh, uh you know a, a, a certain certain trades immediately. For example, right now you can you can take it both ways. You can take on d8 immediately here. But once again, since you're trying to attack trades, you know trading pieces is always good for me as a, as I'm on mm -hmm. I'm on the defensive side, right? Mm -hmm. uh, plus, uh, in this particular case, trades are always also good for me because of something else. Okay, I, I was going to to say it but then i'm gonna ask you now i decided to ask you why do you think trading is good for me in this particular case well but, I, i'm overextended and i'm gonna have a lot of weaknesses and although it the c3 pawn was a beautiful defender it still is a slight weakness is hindering the c2 pawn and now the c2 our c2 pawn is always going to be a threat i'm probably going to keep my light square bishop and i have a lot of weaknesses on the light squares the c2 pawn the h5 pawn um and that's what I'm. This, I'm just like. Mm -hmm. You're right. So I think this this pawn that I just highlighted this is probably going to be the biggest issue in white's position because since right now you're just you're just lacking moves. I don't think you can you can get to play h6 on time. For example, if you play a move like actually you can. If you play like move with knight d2, which is already like you're already giving up some some initiative, right? Because your knight is obviously not as good on d2 as it would be probably on d4 like in the center. Mm -hmm. So if, it, if you place it on d2, now I'm forced to, to defend the e4 pawn and you can get yourself to play h6 in the very ne next move. However, if you don't do that, if you play just knight d4, now by playing h6, I, uh, I fixate your h5 pawn and you don't have enough pieces to like support it, I believe. Like if you right. try to play g4, let's say you go rook g1, I can just play bishop g4 myself. Right. And now obviously this is like, this is like double bad because it's a double attack and you end up in, end up losing the h5 on the pawn immediately. But this is the basic premise, right? So now you have to basically I'm gonna keep annoying this h5 pawn until you know until I'll probably eventually win it because you cannot keep your rook on h1 forever, right? This is the only basically it's the only way you can defend the h5 pawn unless you can get your knight over sorry some somewhere like f4 or g3. But once right. again, it's not that easy to do. Like, let's say you go on e2 now, something like this happens, and once again, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. So yeah, this this is probably one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest weaknesses in your position now. And since you know you traded pieces, you didn't manage to get your pawn to h6 quickly. Even if you do get it to h6 quickly, for example, you go on e2 here, 
Now I need to think about how to defend the e4 pawn. I can probably just go f5. And this, h6, this will happen, yeah. Right? So now you basically solve the problem with your weak pawn on, on h5. But um, I lost all the initiative. Right, exactly. So now I have no weaknesses, right? I have bishop pair, I have two rooks. As, as, you, as you probably know, uh, bishop and rook, b bishop and rook work together. They have a better synergies than a rook and a knight. Mm -hmm. So I can just undoubtedly say that this position is probably, if not much better, but at least slightly better for me. Plus, I'm, I'm technically I'm of a pawn because you have double pawns in the c file. So right. I'm basically, I have no like I just everything just 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 is on the right is in the right place for me. Like all my pieces are going to be in the right spots soon enough, maybe in, mm -hmm. within the next move or two. And yeah, so very good. Once again, this is probably the basic idea of, of why Black plays c65 or so, I believe, at least. And if you go back here, for example, go back to what you suggested, play h4, d5. This is actually why white usually plays knight g5 here, mm -hmm. just so that he can stop knight 4 from happening. And on top of that, what do you think white, white does here? I mean, I'm like, this is just very concrete. Like it's it's like really hard to calculate this, uh, like if, if you ever try to. But um, yeah, what do you think white white does here? What do you think white's plan is? Because if white just moves the knight back, then there was no point in playing h five, right? So you probably understand that much. So what do you yeah. think your plan is here? Like this looks very enticing to kind of leave the knight there take on g5, move the knight, and eventually move the queen, like let's say trace on e4, queen e, um, queen e2 looks pretty strong. Right, exactly. So um, I think at this point, if you don't do, if you don't make like an extra move right now, I think I can probably do something like that. I'm not sure if it mm -hmm. works out for me actually, because yeah, let's, let's just, let's just check it. I'm just curious if this works. For example, something like this can happen, but now you have a double threat, right? Right, you right, still, right. You might still be winning because of that. But I think what White's usual mod up is in this position is to play F3. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to just to you know, just to keep the knight there, keep it annoying, and in case Black ever wants to take it, now you basically have you you're you you're stopping me from playing any four. Right. So and, and we can always play no... g4, right? To like do that like kind of rook sacrifice, right. like yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's actually very similar. This looks similar to ah uh, maybe to some positions in neither of actually. But not but they why it doesn't do that with a knight, they do it with a bishop on g5. It's just leave it there. I think in some lines that's a very typical idea, and then they play like f3, g4, eventually take on f take the knight on f6 and then go g5 quickly. But you know. Uh, it's somewhat similar, but I guess not quite because the knight is not really attacking anything in g5 yet. But once again, as you said, g4, and then let's say if, if I don't react anyhow, g4 comes, and then now you're you're ready to retreat and 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 attack. Uh, continue right. to attack with g5. And also, we have to mention, or maybe I want to mention that they haven't done anything on the queen side, so they're only just defending my attack. Yeah, exactly. Because it's it's scary, you know. It's scary when mm -hmm. when when you, you see all those pawns pawns coming at you, and then you know that if you don't do something, then ninety three g five is gonna come, and then your king is gonna get fully exposed, and that's you know that's 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 not gonna make it any good for you. Uh, in the meantime, to expose White's king, I'll have to okay, that doesn't work. I'll have to take three moves at least, and even then, you know, just like White can just ignore it. So even even then, right. I don't actually get to to expose the king. I just get to like open up a bunch of files. And it's definitely not worth a try because it takes like four moves. White only needs two in the meantime to already accomplish, ready to complete the attack. Right. Okay. Perfect. So was it my move uh, h four right in that position? Excuse me. Was my move h four good? Uh, actually, I think it's probably one of the main moves. I'm not sure, but uh, I think I've def I've definitely <laughs> seen this this before. It may, may actually be this position may actually be a position from from the main line in this particular setup. Got it. But okay. don't don't take my word. Don't don't take my word on it. So okay. if you wanna, if you want to, you can double check later on. But I think there's a good chance that this is probably one of the main ones. Um. Anyway, my opponent decided to not go for a straight uh, like the all out attack, but instead just make a bunch of like logical developing moves. That's why he played rook h to e1, just placing the uh, the rook on the perfect perfect square for the rook. Right now, 
the rocks are placed probably on the best squares they can ever be in, unless mm -hmm. unless G file was open. You know, if the G file was open, obviously the G file would be the you know the best the best file to place your rook onto. But in this case, I think the E1 and D1 squares are probably the best for that purpose. Okay. So this is the spot. So right right here. I've kind of deviated from my standard plan, right? So I played c6, and now I wasn't sure if I want to play d5. Do you th why do you think that is? So I, you can, from what I just told you, you can probably conclude that I didn't play d5 in the game, but there was a specific reason. What do you think that reason is? I don't know. I feel like if you play d5, like, um you so before with d6 you had kind of a small center and they need to come to you to attack but now when you play d5 it's kind of like okay now they have different points so i feel like c4 bishop e6 yes uh, no, that's, mm. c4 yes c4 exactly so now if bishop e6 now bishop e6 is not actually that great of an idea because of very simple continuation. What, like C5? Wait. No, no, actually, wait, wait, I don't give me think you ever want to play C5, right? Yeah, just give me. Sorry, I, I like. Can we just play. Wait, knight d4, knight g4. There's nothing immediate. There's nothing. It probably isn't nothing immediate, but what is wh one of the reasons why placing your bishop on e6 is kind of. Not good in many in many cases. It's a very standard idea for why the bishop is usually not doesn't feel well. Often. Because it's not doing anything like it was. It's doing the same job on c8 that it's doing on e6. No, we're not quite because right now this would be perfect. Right, boom, our bishop right. is awesome. Right, this 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 is the main point. This is why we're playing bishop e6. Right, mm -hmm. and also obviously we're obviously attacking this guy. Right, but but yeah, that's still it's still not gonna work for us. Why? Really, really dumb. But I just want to play knight g five and try to like harass yeah, that bishop. Yeah, why? It's, it's not dumb. It's exactly what I exactly what I wanted to hear, right? Because right now, <laughs> if you let me, right, if you let me take the bishop, and by God forbid you let me get this, like this, <laughs> this is probably one of the worst worst cases for black ever. Because right now you have white has a bishop pair, but has you know, what white has a very good chance of putting like annoying black a lot on these weak white squares over here, and black has a super weak pawn on e6, right? So like there's there's uh, uh, wait, I already mentioned the weak pawn, right? So I mentioned weak pawn, weak squares, and okay, what I didn't mention is a bishop pair for white, right? So white right. basically got three things they could play for out of mm -hmm. nothing. So this is exactly right. why bishop playing bishop e6 is kind of pointless because we don't want that to happen, and like if let's say we, if we ever try to get a position where we take back to the queen, and obviously it doesn't work out because, you know, I I, I suppose it doesn't work out. Why do, oh, actually, is, is this winning for white? I'm not sure. Can you tell well, me like this bishop, is winning? Uh, bishop c5 or something? Yeah, so bishop c5, we need to calculate further, though. Right, knight e4 takes on e4 with the bishop, takes with the pawn, takes take... Okay, so um, so bishop c5, knight e4 takes on e4. You have to take back on e4 because we have a discovery on h7. So okay, so uh, so let's let's walk walk through this move by move. Okay, bishop c5, I believe is is a correct move. And now, uh, now I go knight e4. What do we do? And I was thinking bishop e bishop e4. Okay, so do you think it's it's worth taking the knight right now? Because right now the knight is pinned. So maybe we can you can make a better use of this pin. What do you think? Oh, I, I guess we. Because if we take on e7, and then... Okay, we... so take on e7, what, what would black do? Can I take here? Mm, but then I can just take on e6. Okay, f8. And then I take on f8. Exactly, so now the, I, I lost the piece, right? Because yeah. if I take back the bishop, you take the knight, and boom, you're up a piece. Perfect, okay. Yeah. Let's go back. I can, so that means that I cannot take on d2. I have to, I'm forced to take on e7. Now what can you do? Ooh. 
I want to see like if F3 works. Exactly. So this is the point, right? So F3, you, you can do F3 right now. Right. But there's, Be there's a catch, right? Because this happens. There's, there's a catch. This should, this should give you a good idea of what you should do before you play F3. Right. Which is? Like move the queen somewhere. Hmm? Or let's see. You can. I think at this point, at this point, you're much better. You're probably not like winning, winning, but you're much better. But there is this is this, the line that I've seen probably is going to give you an immediate material advantage. So the question, because the line that you just showed me, f3 and d2, knight c4, you're going to win on b7, but in the end of the day, it's going to be even, you're going to have even number of points. Right, can right? you so take on take on d5? Exactly, so you, this, yeah. just to simply not lose the pawn in this one, right, you just have to make sure you trade it off first. Mm -hmm. And now what I've seen is, now that now you can play f3, even though the knight still survives, but... But now our rook is really guy. active, yeah. Exactly. And this is weakness, and you're gonna get the second rook in there. It's just, it's just everything starts rolling like a big snowball. I feel like this is just not defendable for black, you know. Right. Plus, you have you have a perfect synergy of a of a rook pair and a bishop. Just right. Everything you could ever possibly hope for. King is safe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So this is this is exactly why I didn't like it. Okay. So the engine. So I checked the position of the engine. The engine believes that this. Is the best way to play for black here and go for this position but just by looking at this position i feel like even you will say that white has a little a little bit of something like look all the pieces are just perfectly placed even right. though okay this is a lot of errors i don't like that just way too many errors I, uh, I, we all love arrows so you all love <laughs> arrows can i make them green no is it always orange that sucks okay anyway <laughs> um anyway so as you can see these guys are monsters, right? They're monsters. They're not quite doing anything di like directly, but I feel like things like this, the, the, this can happen, and they're pretty real. For example, mm -hmm. even here, like what would you do? Let's say I play bishop g4. I'm careless enough to play bishop g4. What do you think is possible? I don't. I didn't check this with an engine, but I suppose it would be possible to do what? I really want to play like bishop f7, um, uh, but but okay, knight, maybe okay, knight f4. Too optimistic, right? Yeah, but this is defended. Yeah, so yeah. It's probably a bit too optimistic. But, but just following that forward. note, following that note, just like the that bishop was like their good piece, I think. So I think not, nah, maybe not, because I, I was thinking, can knight? Can we play knight e5? I think so. Yeah, that's that's exactly the more I've been thinking about, right? Because right. here, I'm not sure what kind of what kind of su suicidal person would go for this one. Like, even though mm. Black does win, a, essentially, it's just an exchange. It's not even the full rule. But in the end of the day, White gets an extremely dangerous diagonal with a lot of possibilities for all kinds of discovery checks. Like mm -hmm. right now, the queen is under attack, so obviously we have to move it. And here, like, like if White doesn't win immediately, then then they can just like even probably like do something like this right and just win the rook back win the bishop and, and be up a pawn with the bishop pair like even if, if if there is no immediate win which i doubt i think there's a very high chance there is an immediate win that we just don't see or i don't see maybe you do can you help me with that if you do see an immediate win you can you can direct me so this is the point in the lesson where the 2700 gm acts as the student for help <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't see the win. I think no. My intuition tells me that there there must be a win. Here right, right, right. It just cannot. It just can't be that black for a mere exchange. Black completely throws away everything that we know about chess. Right, like that the king has to be saved. That you know that we don't. We must not have our our king under the discoveries, etc. Blah blah blah. And black does all that for a mere two pawn two pawn material advantage. It's just not right. Doesn't doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, but I still, Honestly, I still like I, I think even even having the this position will lead to long term advantage if we just leave it as is. You think so? No? Because the problem is that next move black does this. Knight d five, yeah. It bothers me. It bothers me because they, they kind of get rid of this annoying annoying uh annoying discovery that we have right now. But we still have annoying so is, moves too, no? This is why, yeah. Look, look, what kind? Like if you if you don't take, like if you don't like, take, then you have to. 
Knight you d5. Have to, have to do something like this, right? I was thinking queen g5, yeah. But now, but now I, I can just move move away. Out of the discovery. And I feel like if you take it too slow, I feel that then maybe... Okay, so to be to be frank, even this is probably way enough of a compensation for the, for the exchange. Yeah, we have a piece and a pawn, so it's basically almost a full comp. Right. And black's king is horrible, but I can never develop this rook because of the knight. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's just probably it's probably winning. Like it's probably just w a winning position. But I think we can probably we can probably find an immediate win. I I know it. I know there's an immediate win, but just for the sake of saving time, I think I'm not gonna. Let's let's just not. Because we can probably agree that even this position is probably winning for you, right? So if you don't, I'm, I'm like kind of like looking at all possibilities, like Bowden's mate or something. I I really think there's something here. I, I think, yeah, <laughs> but it's just it's just it's just black survives with just just I don't know, barely. Like, yeah, barely survives. It just doesn't seem right, but I guess it's right. that's how it is. Maybe 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 just this. Maybe just this. Yeah. Now. But now there's some some queen d ah, but it has yeah. to be winning. Okay, anyway, anyway, you we agree that this is winning, right? Do we do we agree on that? Yeah, I I can totally agree with that. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's let's just because it's probably a time waste. We're gonna we're both <laughs> we're both blind for like ten minutes. We're just not gonna see it, and then we're gonna waste a lot of time, and then eventually. Well, no, and then an the engine using the, the chat game. says, "I found it in two seconds." <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, Honestly, like if you're playing a rapid game or a blitz game, I think just going just going for this something like this would probably be better practically because you're leaving your opponent in a very difficult spot where they have to think about how to develop, how to not lose immediately because there's like a bunch of strats here that you have to be be careful about if you're playing black pieces. Mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. meantime, you know, if in the meantime you have a very straightforward plan in my opinion, you just you just bring the rook over and checkmate. Right. There isn't much black can do about it. This is not a possibility because of queen g7. It's always threatening. So yeah, mm -hmm. should, this should be this should be it. Okay, let's go back. Uh, well, we are we are barely like through like ten percent of the game. And we're, we're like <laughs> okay, well... all, all about anyway, let's move quick. Let's move. Let's move quicker. I played bishop g4, and this is a mis this is an inaccuracy. I would say. So I had to play. I had to go for d5. So the engine mm -hmm. like says it. Uh, so coming back, coming back to uh, what's it, coming back. Where is D five? I'm kind of I'm kind of getting lost with all, in all this notation because we have like, so many lines. We look through. Uh, where is D five? What? Move eleven. Rook H E one. Move twelve. D five. Right? Is that what we've been? Oh no, no. Is it? What What oh, I said was. Here. Oh God. Okay. I found it. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'm just gonna stop you for a second. So uh. Just coming coming back to this position that the engine believes is slightly better for white for like 0.3.4. Mm -hmm. Uh it doesn't look like it's just slightly better. To me, it looks like I'm I'm almost lost. I'm not gonna lie. Because because of these things. Oh, right. Sorry. These things and these guys. I just I just know that if I cannot get my bishop out to g4, I'm doomed. I have I had I just had to find a way to develop quickly because in my mind, if I don't develop with the next two moves, I'm getting checkmated. This is why I don't I didn't go for this position. This is why I decided to go. So here, if you go back to rook, rook h to e1, I went for bishop g4, and this is an inaccuracy. Unfortunately, according to the engine, I mean, in in the game, it looked pretty good to me, uh, especially after what my opponent did. So my opponent played h h3. I'm just gonna show you because mm -hmm. it's a very logical move. My opponent claims that if I if I mean I took because right now obviously if I go bishop h5. I'm 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 risking I'm, I'm taking an enormous risk because right now like I'm helping my opponent watch the attack on the king side, right? So I didn't want to do that, and this is why I just decided to take an f3, and I uh I um I supported this this thought by claiming that my next move move was good. So in this position, what do you think? This is a critical moment of the game. I think it's very possible that my ne the next move that I made loses the game. What is okay? First of all, what do you think? What can you tell me the move I made in the game? And can you tell me? Okay, no, I'm not gonna ask you why it's bad. I'm just gonna ask you to find the move that I made in the game because it's probably one of the most logical moves here that you can make. G6. At least it will, it's one of the okay. G6 would probably would be wouldn't be as bad as the move I made, but G6 is a very logical move. But what I'm trying to go for here is not merely defending my king or overprotecting ah, my king. Ah, I know what, what you played. I'm trying to go for here. I know what you played. Queen a5. Okay, what is it? Queen a5? 
No. Yeah. No. Doesn't, okay. This actually doesn't look. This move doesn't actually look logical to me at all. I'm well, sorry. you told me it was bad. <laughs> you told me to play this a bad actually, move. <laughs> actually, I, don't, I don't know why, but it's actually it actually makes sense, right? So you want to do this, and you want to somehow maybe exactly exactly over, right. It actually looks somewhat logical, but this is what not what I've been what I was thinking about when I reached this position. Because in my mind, if I don't do a certain thing here, then I give White a long-term advantage. So in mm -hmm. this long-term advantage is a bishop pair. I'm going to give you a big hint. So what was I going for when I when I when I reached this position? What was I trying to do? There's no way you play knight d5. What do you mean? What do you mean? There is no way. I mean, uh, if okay, okay, this is not possible, right? This is not possible. And if this is not possible, then I'm just next move. I'm just taking, and then I have an opposite color bishop position where if I mm -hmm. ever get to play g6, I'm fine, right? So this okay. is, this is what was going on in my head. And now, first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna Ask, I'm going to show you that, the, according to the engine, the best move in this position is square e8. Yeah. And now I have to I have to suffer for a very long time defending this. Yes, it, yes. I don't, I don't even get to play g6, because if I play g6, it gives white another, you know, another hook. On knight d5, right? Don't they have a beautiful move? Can, can you, what? Beautiful move. Can they, can, can they get away with bishop h6? Triple X clam, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes they can. <laughs> yes, yes they indeed can because now. Okay, let's let's. Okay, yeah, you're okay. Uh, okay, good, good job, good job. You out, you outdid two GMs, one twenty six sixty and one twenty seven thirty. Good job. What can I say? Okay, uh, my opponent played. Okay, I'm just gonna show you what my opponent played very quickly, and we reached this position. Which is actually even probably slightly better for me at this point because White's mm -hmm. attack fails and White has weaknesses as well. They have a lot of weaknesses, yeah, weaknesses now. Exactly, but you know the fact that it's an opposite color bishop position kind of saves White a little bit in this regard. But still, I'm not the one who is playing for a draw at this point. In my yeah. Opinion. So anyway, let's go back to this. I actually think you're winning, but I think you're winning with with that um, when your knight takes on e3. I feel like you have a beautiful pawn st structure. D five is coming. I'm not winning. No, I'm not winning. I mean, I like slightly better, like slightly more pleasant. Yeah, like yeah. Two, like very tiny better because it's. I'm gonna show you why, but it's like not, not consequential, not, not, not consequential mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, but anyway, let's go back to this, to this spot. It's, it's an amazing spot. What happens if I, uh, if I take? I mean, you, Rook if you play multiple pieces, you have to see the follow up. If you don't see Rook the follow up, Oh uh, yeah, if I don't see the follow up, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. If I don't see the follow up, then uh, like I'm dead, right? So obviously, yeah. So here, what happens if I go P and shape? Here, you don't even have to see that much, right? Um, can I just say I'm winning? Yeah, no, you're. you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, very, very good yeah, two, yeah, two, two threats. Yeah, two threats. I cannot defend from both. Right. From this one, mate on G seven comes. If I defend from. Made in, made in g7 the queen h7 comes okay right uh this is straightforward obviously i have to play something like bishop g5 and now what you you can never take i mean uh my, my queen because you're I, pinned i mean i can i can take if you give me an extra move right right so we can work the pin um that's so that that's that's where my calculation ended like we can work the pin okay. um but you have to see how right I was just thinking h4. Yeah, so f4 would be a terrible mistake. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Because now I got the move that I got the extra move. I, I, and I, I had to give you the exchange. And now, yeah, now I win the exchange because you're forced to do this. And I'm not yeah. only am I winning the exchange, I'm also winning. I'm also, uh, I'm also an, ending up in the in the end game with an exchange up and a pawn up. Mm -hmm. Right. So h4 is the only the only correct way. Let's go back to uh, here. Go h4. And now, obviously, if I just go king and shade, you got this beautiful, beautiful position with a bunch of open files for your rook. To, your bishop is perfectly placed on d3. And now, I'm, I'm honestly, I honestly think this is just lost. I don't yeah. believe that they can defend here. Like, let's say just queen h6 comes and queen h7. Oh, overworked, yeah. Yeah, and then I, I can still keep trying, but I don't think, I think eventually you'll, you'll get there. Eventually, you'll, you'll I'll break it somehow, yeah. Right. I don't have enough resources to keep defending this. Okay, so 
Uh, just king h8 is probably just leaves me in a, in a very bad position. So if I go f6, what would you do now? I think at this point you have uh, you have a couple of very strong responses. Like it's not just one response. It mm -hmm. takes probably uh, probably at least two. At least two moves are probably going to win this. Honestly, I think that I am winning. I I don't know about checkmate, but I I want to just get into a very comfortable position. And I'm thinking, come. You know, you might call me crazy. Well, so but... far you haven't said a single crazy thing, so <laughs> I think you're 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 flattering yourself. You may call me crazy, but I'm just gonna say this extremely strong and powerful move. <laughs> and it's totally it seems totally crazy to me, even though it's winning, probably. <clears throat> okay. Because I I because so I like Bishop C4 because I, I just wanna make more I wanna make more weaknesses in their camp. And then I can always take right, I can always take on G5 when I want to. So I'll so take. At this point, you probably want, right? So you want to take a g5, and now you want to go for this. Yeah. Uh, don't you think you can you can do a better you can do a, a better job? I mean, yep. okay, you got you got. I mean, you 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 basically have no attack anymore, right? And you. Mm -hmm. you and Black just has to keep defending. With some, you kind of left me with some resources, right? Now I have a pass here. Right, I have right. A pass, but I don't. I don't have a weak. I mean, I, my king is sort of weak, but not. Not as bad as it used to be, right? Now and right. now you're also you also well, you also traded your strong bishop on d3 for my not so good knight on d5. Right. So I think you pro can probably do one better. Okay, so let's go back. Um, that's primary calculations, right? Okay. You never say your best move first, right? You you always analyze what's yeah, possible. That's that's very true. You know, you never make your best move first. You always see it after you make after you make a. An initial right, moment, right. then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I've been such an idiot. Why did I not play there? That's that sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what would you what would you do if it, if this was a real game? What move? Would if you this do? was a real game, I would think here a lot for a while. Okay. Okay, that's fair enough. This is probably one of those moments when you we want to maximize your advantage. And yeah. So this is like a, a really good point for if you want to become a strong chess player, like understanding. Um, and obviously I'm not telling you, but I'm telling the chat, <laughs> um, that you want to understand where you need to pause and where you need to spend time because here I, I can kind of feel that I'm already going to the end game. So how can I maximize my advantage so that I'm going to have an easier game and be able to finish this off? Because the worst thing is having a one game and then drawing or losing it. So, so yeah, at this point, the draw would be considered the poor result because you've got mm -hmm. so far, you've, you've got black into all these difficult spots and now you know if you kind of let it go to waste by making an inaccurate move it, 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 it kind of ruins ru ruins the mood at least it would ruin the mood at least at least for me you know if, when i know that i found a brilliant bishop h6 and then i just let it all go to waste so okay how can we keep at it hello yeah, yeah, I'm calculating. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh my god, I thought, I thought I got cut off. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like now I'm just considering moves, right? And I'm kind of saying, okay, um, yes, of course they have this pin. Does f4 work? Does c4 work? You know, can I, can I move this knight first? You know, um, can I just keep improving my position because if the knight goes to e7, then um, the, it blocks off the queen. The d6 pawn is now exposed. You know. Um, they're ha gonna have a lot of weaknesses in their camp you know uh, another thing is yeah so um we're just, so, but we're just thinking about the two moves that i that i was initially thinking of like those those are the <laughs> moves that i believe the both that I, i'm gonna tell you straight uh like straight i believe both of these moves are equally good i think uh you can find the cases for making either c4 or f4 for example let me let me tell you my thinking. So the logical my logical thinking goes as follows. If you play c4 here, mm -hmm. obviously I cannot play king h8 now because you simply take on g5. This guy is hanging. This pawn is hanging. I end up at least losing a pawn right on on, mm -hmm. on h6. The very next move because I have I'm forced to move my knight back. So I don't want right. to lose it. That's that's why I want to move my knight back right here. And here you can put additional pressure on on onto my g5 bishop by playing f4. So it's essentially you're just including the c4 move. 
just to make sure my net is not in the center, right? Right. Um, however, if you do this, then my net is cl getting closer to the black hit. So here I can actually, if, you, if I'm black, I can actually uh, play something like g6. And if you take, let's say you take uh, twice and they reach this position. Now at least I have a defender on g6, even though it mm. still looks horrible, right? Because yeah. you're getting, you're getting, you're getting the, the double up on the g file. You're probably going to get the f4, f5 eventually, and you're going to kick the net out of g6. But still, I got an extra defender on g6. In the meantime, uh, if you play f4 right here, all that doesn't happen. However, let's say I go king h8. Once again, same same story happens. Look to g5. Um, now, however, uh, wait. Uh, wait, f4, king h8, blah blah blah. Okay, it's good. Okay. However, here, black gets to play at f4. Right. So this is very concrete. At the right. Same time. Uh, the rook is uh, not defended, and um, my next move is going to be just trading off the strong bishop on d3. So if this may still be good enough for white. Like, let's say something like this may be good enough. But the question is, if you want to part with your bishop, if you want to, you know, if you want to allow the trade and go into this probably still superior position, but the question is how better or or is yeah. it good enough? Is it as good as the position where you play c4 first? Like, let's say here, or is it better? Or is it worse? So you have to like, give it a really deep thought or no thought at all. That's my approach. So if you if you're not sure if you believe that something is to my original like my logical thinking here is that since I'm attacking, mm -hmm. I don't want to trade, right? Mm -hmm. I don't wanna, since I don't want to trade, I don't want to go into the position where Black gets to play at four. Right. Therefore, the answer play c4 allows the extra defender here allow the extra defender, but save the bishop. That would be that would be my thinking here. But I'm still That's attacking. Huh? But now I'm still attacking, and I still have my attackers, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, here I can. Black may opt out for the some sort of f5, and here at least, at least this knight is now on a kind of an outpost square, like not not really, but you know, at least it's blocked. It's, it's getting like so. You see, you have to factor in all, all these all these cases mm -hmm. because if you if you if you uh, decide that allowing this position to happen is not good enough for you, right? Because right now. Black's king is kind of safe, like more or less safe, and the knight is kind of useful. It can go e5. It can. Right. It can if you decide, ever decide to play f4. Now it's annoying, right? Now it's 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 always attacking the f4 pawn. So you have to you have to factor in all these cases. So my first impression is that I shouldn't go for for the line where Black gets to trade the knight for a bishop. On the second thought, if I see this, I may change my mind, and I may decide to I may decide to go for that position where. At least the position is still open. The black king is still exposed, and I still have some attack going, even though I traded the bishop off. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking. Perfect. Can we go back? Yeah. Well, well, which move? Um, just um, uh, where the knight before the knight goes to g6, like that move where he goes to g6. Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm. Wait, I have to. I have to start promoting. Promote. Yeah. I have to start promoting. Like where you play c4, ninety-seven. Really, really here, one second. Mm-hmm. Where is it? I lost it. Oh, is it? No, that's, oh my god, that's, that, has to be, <laughs> that has to be promoted. This has to be promoted. I apologize. I, you're I, fine, I just, you're fine. I lost. I lost. Oh, here. Okay, so here, right? This is a, this is the moment. Yeah, C4, Where, 90, C4, 97. Promote this line. C4, 97, F4, right? <laughs> not, not that. No? No, that okay. So you oh oh you mean f four right away? No no no. So c four. Okay. Ninety seven. Ninety seven promote. There. Okay. Y yeah. So. Four, right. Yep. And so, here I I'm just wondering what to do. I'm wondering. Do we? Because we have two f pawns. Okay. So I'm wondering if we can play f4, knight g6, and maybe h5. Ooh, spicy! But no. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no because because of this. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that's what I was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we can't play it. But I was just thinking, One, like. Okay. 
it would be it would be a great idea. You know what? I think it would be a very cool idea if let's say if there was no KH eight, let's say you get to play, you get to get a position like this, and this bishop is stuck. Right, 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 right. right. It's stuck, but I even here I can still save it because f five. So he's just lacking a couple of moves. Maybe not one, but maybe like two moves. Actually. I'm always looking for the spicy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, spicy. Actually, no, you're fine. If you have just one extra move, you get to you get to have this position, and the bishop is going to be that's gonna yeah. Be gone. I, think I, don't mm -hmm. think I can I can defend it. It can go to h four, but then even there, it's kind of shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, this would be a it would be a it would be cool if it, if it, if this worked. But I'm right, right. Say. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I think but I. <laughs> good try. But but, but those are always good. moves that you're coming up with. You have to see these kind of like ideas, and even if they don't work, you saw it, then you move on to another variation. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Because then you get to have like game of the century, like Bobby Fischer. If you don't see these moves, then you don't, you can't have a game like that. <laughs> you know, you know what would be a game of the century? What? Bishop H6? Uh, first, of all, I have to, first of all, I have to promote this because this is what Nampan did in the game. <coughs> Bishop H6. Uh, no, Bishop, this is a correct move here. The game of the century would be this, if this happened. Now you tell me, you tell me how, how you win. You tell me, you tell me how you make this into a game of the century. With black? No, with white. Black just played KH8. Black was stupid enough to play KH8. I, I see on, on my board, um, I don't know if you have my stream open, but I see after I play h5. So I'll refresh my screen. Let me just refresh. So maybe I can... I, I have to refresh? No, I'll refresh. I'll refresh. Okay. Well, I don't see your screen at all. Are you sharing or... Oh, oh, no, oh, I, I'm... To, I have I'm, to open your screen. Yeah. One sec. Let me, let me go and share. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here. Okay. Like from blacks. Yeah, it's not what hap what's happening on my screen. Is it still? Yeah, it's still the same position. Oh, that's that is really maybe I should refresh. I can refresh. I th I I've seen this happen. Oh, wait, now it's gone. No, it's not. Okay. Oh, okay. Now I have it too. Wait, what happened? It might <laughs> it might be my hotspot actually. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're. I see what you're talking okay. about. Okay. Okay. Let, let me fix this. So bishop h6. Oh, like what happens if they play king h8 here? Yeah, do you see it on your screen now? King h8. So the bishop's on f6, right? Yes. So okay. move 15, king h8. Do you see it? I don't know yeah, the moves because I I'm just looking. Yeah. You do see it. You do see. It. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So here you have to you have to see a win, basically. Okay, so that's me. Let's find another one. What? I, I'm just looking at, can can I take, takes on g7, takes on g7, rook takes g, um, g7. What, can he play king f6, queen g5, uh, bish, king e6, and then bishop f5 mate? So they can't play there. Well, okay. So you're doing... You're doing th this this kind of stuff. So you're you're saying bishop g7 here. This. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if they can come up, and then if here king up, and now um, what mates? Anything mates? I mean, Check. I, anything, right? I mean, yeah. Probably anything mates in my <laughs> okay. Here, okay, it doesn't it doesn't matter much, right? Right. Uh, yeah, but. Okay. So I'm just checking if that's possible first, and then going through the line again and see like what so i have to see the critical line what happens if they play king h8 and what happens if they okay so like let's say on bishop captures um captures king h8 so they don't take the rook then i have at least h7 rook g1 and i'm winning so here uh takes on h7 and rook g1 okay well i can argue with you that if, if i play, play here now you're not checkmating me haha -ha. Wait, what? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay, okay. So he just played king h8, that's why. So go, go, go back. Here. Go back one more. Two more, two more moves. Okay, yeah, so king, okay, so yeah, so takes on g7. Takes on g7, and oh, if you play queen to h4, is what you're saying. This is why, you sh this is why, this is the trick, right? This mm -hmm. is exactly why. 
I mean, okay, there's no way. It's, this is why, according to the engine, you're supposed to take on this rook first. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. And now, but like, but I, if you I let me calculate suppose, all the way through, I would have seen that. I suppose <laughs> there's something, something here, maybe some just some rook g1. Uh, wait, 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 wait. And now you're checkmating, I guess. Okay, even if you are not checkmating, you're at least up. You're gonna be up a queen. Okay, the like the uh, the a better a better queen than what 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 would happen if you if you take on g7 with a bishop. Right. This you're you're up up a queen for a rook, uh, as opposed to being up a queen for for a rook and a knight. You know. But anyway, right. it's just it's just it's just small details. Like even there, you're easily winning. Uh mm -hmm. good. This is why if I the only move for actually this is the only move. <laughs> That saves the game for black, but it's like it's just so bad because, um, actually, surprisingly, according to the engine, there's nothing you can do here. Like, I know I'm saying according to the engine, I'm a bad player, blah blah blah, but I tend to trust engines in like positions like these because you know they're good, they're good with attacking, they're good with right. attacking, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that the engine is capable of, 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 of identifying a good, good versus bad attack. Mm -hmm. So the engine like is is like he the engine is like a fangirl about the wise position here. At this point, it's like saying that this would plus one something one point three one point four, which is not in, like losing losing, but it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Right. Me, it, it basically means they have to like sacrifice. Eventually, sacrifice something to avoid the checkmate or go into an unfavorable endgame or yar yar. You know, somewhere somewhere along the lines. Uh okay, so yeah, this would be this would be kind of epic if my opponent found this. So fortunately for me he did not. And uh, I had to face a, a not so not so scary rook g1. Obviously I was happy and I immediately took on e3 thinking that I'm some of some sort of genius who who freaking closed the line closed the well Kellogg Castle line in Petro, you know. <laughs> Stupid me. Silly goose I am. Uh, okay, so bishop of six I played. Uh, obviously mm -hmm. now I have queen h6 and queen h6 doesn't do much because I simply have g6 and my bishop conveniently goes back to g7 the very next move. Right. And this allows my this allows me to get rid of this annoying queen on h6. So right. I guess that's why my opponent did not play queen h6 first. He played h4 first. So here, okay. same, same story happened. And now, White is actually the one who has to be extremely careful. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't, he played h5. Why, is it, why was this a not so good option for White? I didn't find in the game. I feel like both me and my opponent, we, it wasn't our best game, but I guess it was a good enough quality game, you know, that, that I, I, I just had to show it to you. But anyway, so h5 was a bit too overly optimistic for white, and why, why is I, it so? I want to play rook e5, um, but but you're winning a pawn in that variation with bishop g5, Ooh. rook captures g5, queen captures... Oh, no, actually, because you have to stick with the rook, right? So you, I'm getting an exchange. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what about... Wait, uh, uh, this is a more made basically, bishop g7. Uh, didn't see a very simple rookie five as you mentioned. What if what if a four? This wins the pawn, right? Mm -hmm. Ha ha, got him! Ha ha, mm -hmm. got him! Mm -hmm. So what do you do if not rook takes h five? Well, we just trap the queen. Yeah, we just trap the queen. Exactly, bishop g seven. Very good. Now, unless you have like something to trick me. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just like rook h five. Obviously, we win after rook h five, but nope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was like, am I missing something? It's finned. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. No, you're, not. You're, you're, you're a smart guy. What can I say? Okay, so now the only, the only logical move White can make, the, or the only logical continuation for White would be to go for this position, which is actually for some reason King Shit is better than King G Seven. I don't know why. Don't ask me. I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm no engine. But yeah, King H Eight is. I. I, I think. I think I think I think because if you go King G seven now he, this is a check maybe that's why maybe now you still have well, you still have to go to a, back to H eight maybe why just wins a tempo just went tempo this way yeah but okay anyway, I, I like King H eight myself right. actually right so King H eight and we eventually get to something like this 
which according to the engine is just maybe like 0.4 better. So your white has a very very good chance of surviving, I guess because of so the the H support is so it's uh, so. Far but they have to play so accurately, no? Because I'm 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 looking at stuff like F4 Rook E7. Give me the pawn. Even if you play F4 Rook G4, give me that pawn. You right? Like so. Right. I'm I'm already looking at stuff like that and mm -hmm. saying, okay, your pawn on H7, okay, it's defended, but like let's make some pressure. And my rook on the E file, I'm is cutting off the E file. So yeah, that that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, unfortunately the only way to kind of like because you can't really make much progress unless you get rid of this H7 pawn, right? Right. So one of the ways I see how I can accomplish it is to simply play a five, walk this bishop, and then attack the pawn on h7. But once again, it's gonna take some nerve to to, to get it done. For example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you ever play h5, like if you let's say you play h5, so f5, f4. f5 here, there is some there's some f4 stuff, right? And now white actually have full comp. And I'm not even sure if you can black is better anymore. You can never because you, I think white's probably better at this point, because you can never get rid of this h7 pawn, right? This bishop cannot be kicked out from this diagonal. And at the same time, white has a, a piece into pawns, so mm -hmm. the full comp. Um, this is why I guess a five is not going to be that easy to accomplish. And if you don't accomplish, if you don't get to play a five, if you, if you don't get to get rid of the h7 pawn, then how how are you gonna like? You can you you have two rooks, but like, eventually, like since it's an end game, you kind of need your king to help you out. Right. I don't think two rooks alone can can win the game. But also like the rook on the h file looks kind of sad it does but you know if black doesn't make much progress and white white can just keep like moving right right you know, okay back and forth since white's not the one trying to win at this point um mm -hmm. okay well, let's go back so i played bishop g7 silly me i i don't see tactics at all so <laughs> yeah my opponent could have probably could have just forced a draw like like this for example this is just a very easy draw i believe even though uh, I don't know, actually, it, it is an easy draw because white gets to play a five, and then we just have essentially a sym symmetrical, not a symmetry, but more or less uh, even position in terms of pawn structure and the opposite core bishop endgame, right? Right. So I don't think it's it's winnable. It's, yeah, I don't think it's winnable for black. Uh, however, my opponent was clearly trying to win, so he played queen h2. Uh, I was okay with that. I played d5. Seems like a good move to me. Now we traded. White played a four, and here, can you please find? A plan that I've seen, a very powerful plan for me. Because I mean it's it's very pretty obvious what white is trying to do, right? So if you don't do something, that's gonna happen and then you yeah, you're probably still fine because actually no, you're not fine. Even you can you can avoid the pen, right? You can move the king over to f eight, but then white's gonna double up on the G file and then your G seven bishop is gonna be in sort of a trouble, so you still don't want that to happen, I'm pretty sure. So is there any way to avoid that? Let me remove this. So, I'm thinking, and so this is just the first step of my thinking. I'm thinking, okay. can we play queen d6, b5, b4? Queen d6. Okay, so by playing queen d6, you're kind of stopping f5 for mm -hmm. one move. Mm -hmm. And then they move their queen somewhere, and then b5, b4, because I want to maybe take on c3. Are you sure you have enough time to do that? Th so this is just a preliminary calculation. Does this work? Can this work? This is why I said okay, that. I but okay, I don't yeah, think so. so. I yeah, so I think it's probably a bit too slow because okay, I'm gonna give you both pawns. You can have both. Right. That's fine. But then what I care about. Really and then you just step about, over to right. King B two, right? Or King yeah. B one. King B one. Yeah, I don't really care about these pawns at all. What I really care about, however, is opening up the G file for my rooks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's it's a good idea, but it, unfortunately you're you're running out of time. Yeah. So let's uh go with. No. No. Run, running out of time as in as an attempt as an attempt to defend your own king right so mm -hmm. you don't have enough time to defend and attack at the same time or maybe you do who knows maybe mm -hmm. 
So just to help you out a little bit, at this point, you just have to look at the root of the problem. So the problem is that why this about the player fuck. And what is actually causing this player I, to work? If you think I, I want to play C5, C4. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> ah, exclamation mark. Yes, yes, because, like, okay, now you have to see whether this works or not, because it's exactly what my opponent played, and you have to see if this leads to what you want to lead, what you wanted to lead to. Mm. Because I'm going to tell you that my opponent attempted to checkmate me or to, like, win a bunch of stuff for me. However, after the next move, it's pretty clear that I'm the one was trying to win. So what's the move that I made here? I'm just looking if trading works. It's not, it doesn't just work. It is simply probably the best thing you can ever do if you're up material, right? So you're trading yeah. queens off the board, and this is all you need to know. This is all because right now you're no longer in danger of being checkmated. At this rookie point, four. The danger is that... Yeah. Rookie, the, yeah, actually, yeah, here I spent... I think my opponent was really long time here. He had like less than a minute and I had like a lot of time like eight minutes or so so I spent like a good portion of my time trying to find the most efficient way to avoid trading pawns as much as I possibly could so I played rookie five but then still I I kind of started running out of time myself and uh, mm -hmm. so at, th at this point it was all fine and here I well I I, I at this point I played d4 so the my thinking about my th my logical thinking here is that if I if I allow this now it's four b two right now it's four b two or four pawns versus two pawns even though I'm up a piece it's still it's still a better pawn white improves their pawn stretch however if I play d four it seems like I'm gonna win at the f two pawn anyway however the pawn white's pawn structure still remains the same right they, they still have double pawns on the c file and uh, and I get to take the f two pawn here which I immediately did and then I, and I realized. With a little bit of disgust, that now now this rook actually come comes over here and c six is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I was actually pretty upset at this point. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going I'm going so quickly here. I think I'm gonna go back. I'm no, back I think you're wanted... going at a great speed. Okay, good. So I just wanted to show you what happened because I didn't I, I wasn't going to go through the entire game because eventually my opponent managed to trade all the pawns and he got to this rook and bishop versus rook versus versus rook and two pawns end game and because my opponent was so long times i won won the game yeah i won that game uh but this is what this was probably the critical moment of the game so i played bishop g5 and i allowed uh allowed the the two essential trades to happen so i went rook a8 and i allowed this and unfortunately at this point i cannot avoid getting to trading rook pawns versus, right yeah and i know that rook and bishop versus rook and whatever, however many pawns there are, it's obviously a draw for a defensive side because you know. But you won. Rook and bishop, but I won because yeah, I won because actually I, I'm gonna show you the re remaining of the game. I actually managed to use white pawns as a shield for my king. Essentially, I shouldn't be able to make progress progress here. So if white plays this correctly, I shouldn't be able to make progress. However, I think this was a mistake. I think my my opponent shouldn't play this at all. If he just plays a king, something like king c4 here, and mm -hmm. keeps the king on white squares. Uh, you should be able to just hold, and I shouldn't be able to make progress any, any further. But c3 kind of gives my, and yeah, if, as you can see, oh, that's a nice move. Yeah, kind of, yeah, my opponent kind of cut cut his king off himself, and now Ouch. actually this point position might already be winning for me. So here, wow. my opponent has a second. This is probably winning. This is probably a theoretical win at this point. But mm -hmm. still, if my opponent like, plays king d1, he still has he still. He, he can still like ask me, like, he can still ask me to prove it, to prove it that I know the winning pattern and did not. I had a very little time, I did not remember the winning pattern here. Fortunately for me, my opponent just forgot that there's a checkmate in the one. So, uh, wow. Yeah, it's it kind of a little bit lucky for me, yeah, but I think I played sort of well. I played this game like, okay, -ish. not well, but okay. -ish. So, I, this win kind of helped my team to stay afloat even though they all i mean the rest of my team wasn't as successful as i was during this game but still it kind of added a little bit of confidence to my team 